I remember in Harvard Square, one of the students named Blake, he gets up. A team goes there and we're watching in the background because I wanted to go and just, you know, they said, Alan, we can't wait to hear you street, street preach. I go, oh, you don't get it. I can't wait to see you. I can't wait to be there and watch God use you. So we were watching. Remember that Ellie and I were there from a distance. We were watching. We didn't want to scare him. <laughs> he gets up. And he begins preaching the gospel. And all of a sudden in that square, it's kind of like a trendy, edgy place. And so you've got students, preppy students, edgy, creative types that are just in the swirl of the college, but not really there. And then you've got drug dealers who are making money off a boat. And in that square, he stands up and begins to preach. And suddenly you hear the cursing. Shut the blank up. Get out. You, and I mean, they just start. And he just stands his ground. He gets done. They're still cursing. The next one steps up. Wait, beloved. They're still cussing at him. They're still mocking him. Telling him to get down. Lies. It's all lies. Shut up. All that, all that uh, mocking. He gets done. The third guy steps up. I mean, there's, they're just there. Now, these were first, this is the first time they did these things. And the third and fourth year students were saying, we were scared to death too, but then God used us. We love it. And they were declaring, even to the atmosphere, the truth, the manifold wisdom of God to powers and principalities. By the third person, a holy hush fell on the square. <laughs> Suddenly, the atmosphere shifted. What was going on the same time as down on the street corner, somebody else was preaching out loud. Over there where the subway system lets in and everyone's going in. Two people were up preaching there on the campus. It's just everywhere. Just a mass of bodies. Underground, above ground, everywhere. Those four drug dealer types. Now I can't say they're drug dealers, but I'm pretty sure. I mean, I didn't buy anything from them, but I'm pretty sure that's what they were there for. One of our girls named Morgan. If you saw this girl, you wouldn't think she's going to be this bold evangelist. She's this well put together girl, just real pretty and teed. And she walks right up to them. Like a lioness, she just begins to engage them. She begins to prophesy the secrets of their heart. And they get scared. They, they literally... Say, stop. This is freaking us out. It's like your inner mind. It's like you're reading our thoughts. And she goes, that's the conviction of the Holy Spirit. And you need to turn right now. One of the young men, he turns, he begins weeping. And the other three start shouting. You betrayed us. How can you do this? She's lying to you. They're not telling the truth. And he doesn't move. He's under the spirit of conviction. He's immediately praying. Receive the Lord. <laughs> Beloved. Over and over. Stephen Venable. He's up preaching the resurrection. The Daniel Academy students, high schoolers went with us. And they were standing up. My son Samuel preaching the gospel from the steps of the Unitarian Church. Proclaiming the only way to salvation. Girl became violent with him. Said, how can you do this? This is violence for you to get up here. He goes, what's wrong? I thought... You said always lead to God. I thought you would have liked what I said. She didn't know what to do. 
14-year-old path leader. My other son, Jonathan, over two uh, Harvard students, he's 12. He prophesies, sees pictures, prophesies to him to go weeping. I'm going, God, I'm watching it. I'm watching it. You see, we've heard over and over, Harvard's too hard. Uh Uh-uh. It's not. Why? They're human hearts. He wants to reach them. Over and over, we begin to witness this. In fact, I'll tell you one. Can I tell you another street preaching story? On the last day, one of our students named Paul, Paulie, we call him. He's from Manhattan. And it's raining that day, so everybody's underground. And while he's waiting on the subway to come, they're gathered 300 at this one station. So he stands up, and the opening of baseball season had begun. New York Yankees versus Boston Red Sox. Probably the most just antagonistic baseball rivalry there is. He stands up, a New Yorker, and goes, I've got good news to tell you all. The Yankees beat the Red Sox last night. We're thinking he's going to die. So they start shouting at him and booing him, and he goes, I'm just kidding. That's not good news at all. But he's got everyone's attention. He goes, I'm here to tell you about the good news of Jesus Christ. He begins preaching. And as he begins preaching, this group is beginning to mock him. As they're beginning to mock him, some of our students target them. They walk up to him and begin to prophesy to him. It shuts him up. He continues to preach. And one of our other students, students, Julio, stands up next to him and says, Now, those who have heard Paul, Share about the Lord Jesus Christ and salvation. If anyone would like prayer and to receive the Lord, come forward. The mockers are having their little comments when all of a sudden a lady dressed in red from the very back starts pushing her way through the crowd. She's weeping. She goes, I need prayer. I want to receive the Lord. As the train pulls up, the doors open. Polly takes her, gets on the train, and leads her to Jesus. Beloved, what if the train had come five minutes earlier? The doors would have opened. The doors would have closed. And everlasting life would not have been offered to that precious lady. We saw healings. The first day after they were so nervous and we prayed and God met them and filled them with joy. They came back that night holding two canes in their hands. I'm like canes. Expensive canes. Nice canes. And the, and the student gets up and he goes, this was wild. I saw him sitting there. He looked really bad off. He's got a cane. I come up and begin to ask him if I can pray for healing. If his legs hurt, I pray for his leg. His leg gets healed. And then just matter of factly, he says, well, I really need healing in my ear. My leg's nice, but I'd like my ear. He goes, okay, let's pray for your ear. Prays for his ear. Just matter of fact, he goes, I'm healed. My ear's healed. And he goes, Jesus healed your ear. Would you like to receive the Lord? Yeah. Okay. Praise for and receive the Lord. Would you like to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Yeah. He prays for him. He suddenly starts bursting out in tongues. Now this was happening all over. When people would get saved, they would pray for him to be filled with the Spirit. And right there... People who had not had a religious background, the spirit broke out and they began to pray in tongues. Over and over, we watched this. 
as this basketball player, this was a great one. Because we were asking God, do notable miracles that would go all over the campus and start the rumors and the Twitters and the Facebooks and get us into classrooms and get the airwaves and get us on the radio and TV. Just bring a notable miracle. So one day a basketball player for Harvard is using crutches going across the middle of the campus and one of our students walks up and goes, hey, would you like the Lord Jesus to heal you? He goes, yeah. I mean, the, I love the athletes. They're just so pragmatic. Oh, yeah. I need, to, I need to be healed. So he prays for him. And he goes, well, how's it doing? He does just the simple interview process. Well, how's the, if the pain is zero to 10, 10 being the highest, one being the least, and zero being not at all, what's the pain? Kind of like a five. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, it's like a five now. What was it? A 10? It's a five now? Yep. Well, well, God wants it a zero. So they pray again. He goes, it's a zero. It's healed. He takes his crutches. They pray with him. Takes his crutches and walks through the middle of the campus. And suddenly the Christians on campus that had been beat down mocked, pushed down because of atheism and agnosticism and humanism, suddenly they begin to call us going, the word's getting all out all over the campus that a basketball player's been healed by those Jesus people that have invaded our campus. Here, for, for you intercessors, something glorious happened the next day. The prayer room was going while other people were out. And the prayer room was going in this church called the Lion of Judah Church. And they said, this is not our building. This is the Lord's building. You can come here and have your prayer meetings all day and your services. So all day long, we had prayer meetings going. Fervent prayer meetings. Well, this, this young gal, this single mother, she was a heroin addict. Addicted to heroin. Her mother was part of that church. And so her mother was trying to get her help. And she would go to that church often to get food and resource. Well, she walked in that afternoon while the prayer meeting was going on. And in her own words, this is what she said. She said, I walked in that room and there was a different vibe in there. I go, vibe? She said, yeah, there was a different vibe. It was different. I've been here many times. This was different. So I sat down. She said, suddenly I began to weep. Suddenly the Holy Spirit came on her. She said, I got freed instantly from heroin addiction. Suddenly everything became clear. Suddenly I got focused. Suddenly the cravings left. And so our students led her to Jesus. And then prayed for her, and she broke out speaking in tongues, filled with the Holy Spirit. She gets up that night with her little girl as her mom was weeping, kissing her because her daughter, who was dead, is alive again. <laughs> kissing all over, and her daughter goes, retold the story of how she gave her life to Jesus. And she felt his presence. She had always heard of him. But now she had encountered the risen Lord. And felt his spirit. She was different. How many of you have seen heroin addicts? They look 10 years older than what they really are. But her face, her countenance changed. She looked like a little girl. She looked like her innocence had been restored. It was, it was like she changed. It was like. She was an eight-year-old girl. I just wanted to pick her up and hold her. I was like, oh, I love you. You're so innocent and pure and clean. And you're going to make someone an awesome husband one day. I mean, a... you know what I mean. Awesome wife one day. Husbands, some man's going to be very lucky to get you. You know, when Jesus heals you and cleanses you, he does it all the way. Your past is gone. You're brand new. Don't beat yourself up for the last five years. Some of you have given things away and 
you think you've lost your dignity forever and so you just give up and the next guy you go to because you lost your dignity back then. No, you're a new creation. You've got dignity now. No one can steal that from you. I tell you, I watched as this girl was transformed. Crystal Camacho, one of our students, her and her team, they were tenacious. They were filled with love. She had, they'd done street preaching earlier in the, in the subway systems. I think they call it the T. And without any fruit, that particular time they did it and they were like, well, I guess they didn't really respond. So she looks over and there's four guys standing there. So she walks over, begins to strike up a conversation and just goes for it telling them the gospel. Now as she's telling the gospel, another young man, another one of our students walks up and begins to prophesy the secrets of each one of their hearts. He's getting words of knowledge for each one of them. Now they're crying. Now their heart's open. Now she says, would you like to receive the Lord? Yes. They pray, receive the Lord. Would you like to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Yes. They receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit right on the spot. Now here's the glorious thing. Their other friend, the fifth friend that they didn't know was with them, walks up. He missed the whole thing. He goes, what in the world is going on? So Crystal goes, looks at the four guys and goes, tell him what just happened to you. Share with him the gospel and tell him what just happened to you. So the four tell him the gospel, share with him that they just gave their lives to Jesus and got filled with the Holy Spirit. The other young man who prophesied earlier prophesies over him and they lead that guy to the Lord. Beloved, I have so many stories. Some of the most fun ones were one group shared the gospel and prophesied and prayed over someone. They didn't receive the Lord, but they received prayer. They were walking back. They hit the next group who then stopped them, shared the gospel, prophesied over them, got done, kept walking, hit the third group, finally gave up and said, okay. <laughs> We had 350 students around that campus. After the first day, the spiritual atmosphere began to shift. Everything began to change. Instead of going, it's so hard, our students were filled with faith and were going, if Jesus is winning them this easy, he can do it anywhere at any time. Oh, they were so filled. By the second and third day, they were going, let, just let us at them, Jesus. <laughs> Lining up just one after another. This one girl, precious, on the same night that the heroin addict gave her testimony. This precious girl named Rachel, Korean, from Boston University. Her friends, she came to the school and her friends kept pressuring her, pressuring her to lose her virginity. They made fun of her because of her purity. Throughout the year, they just over and over berated her, made fun of her, kept insisting that she needed to lose it. And they'd worked up to this certain date where she had finally kept getting weaker and weaker. Was going to do what they said. So she prayed a little prayer. She wasn't a believer at this time, but in that place of desperation, she threw up a little prayer to God and said, God, if there's any way, save me from this. So that day she went to meet her friends in Harvard Square <laughs> before whatever was going to take place. But instead of her friends showing up, they were late. Crystal Camacho sits down. She begins to share the Lord with her and they begin to talk about what's going on. And Crystal starts prophesying and speaking into her and all her 
the other students around her of how, how this is such a noble thing and how pure it is and encouraged her and said, would you like to receive the Lord Jesus? Yes, receives the Lord. So Crystal and them go, well, your friends aren't here. Why don't you just stay with us for the rest of the day and hang out with us as we do what we do and then come to the service with us tonight? She goes, well, I'm, I'm not really dressed for that. They go, hey, you're with us. You're one of us now. You're sister in Christ. So she just hangs with her. She shows up at the service. She insists that she get up and give a testimony. I mean, the presence of God is on her that that one hour, you know, two hour year old hour believer that's just like, he did it, he saved me, he delivered me. She gets up and she tells the story. And she goes, but there's one more thing I want. I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So we take her off the stage, gather the students around her, and within two minutes we hear, she got it! She got it! Well, we were praying for divine appointments. And one day, we were praying, God, let us speak to the hardest of the hard. Somehow, through a series of events, by flooding the campus of Harvard by the third day, somehow, one of our girl students gets into what's called the Good Without God Club. It's the main humanistic, agnostic, and atheistic club on the campus whose sole purpose is to promote and educate and enrich those who have a philosophy that there is no God and there's no need for God. They do things like go down to Mardi Gras and stuff. I mean, what else is there to do but sin after you've taken God out of the equation? I mean, everything's open then, right? It's called the good without God. And they somehow she found herself at the meeting with the professors and students. She comes in and they ask her to share what all these students are here for and what's going on. So she boldly, in front of the most antagonistic professors, begins to declare the gospel of Jesus Christ to them. She leaves wondering what they thought, but not caring, rejoicing that she gave the faithful witness. And as she leaves, after she gets through that afternoon doing outreach, she takes the bus back to the church. Well, on the bus, she hears a voice say, hey, aren't you that Jesus girl? Aren't you the Jesus girl that came to our meeting today? She says, well, yes, I am. She goes, I was there. Tears start running down her face. She goes, I knew the Lord once, but when I came here, I walked away from the faith, and I haven't had peace since. I know what you said was true. Would you pray for me? Oh, yes, I'll pray for you. Let her to the Lord. Pray for her to be filled with the Spirit on the bus. And then the girl turns around and goes, the the gentleman who started it, his name's Greg, a professor there who's written the book. And she goes, Professor Greg, he needs this. He needs this. And so our student goes, let's pray for him right now. God's going to use you. He really needs this. Let's pray for him. God can get him. And they pray for the guy who started the humanistic club. <laughs> Oh, my. And then our students would also witness outside of Berkeley Music School. And there were, there were numbers of Christians already there. One team was walking back and they were singing. And as they were singing, going by Berkeley, this older Chinese gentleman passes by them. And as they pass by and they're singing and proclaiming the good news, he stops and the power of the Spirit falls on him. He begins to weep. He tells the young man, and the young man just boldly shares the gospel. He goes, aren't you, 
I've heard about all these students around the campuses. Are you part of them? He goes, yes. And he jumps right in, doesn't miss a beat. This Asian student begins to tell this Chinese older man about the love of Jesus Christ. Leads him to the Lord. Prays for him to be filled with the Spirit. And then the man says, I'm a Harvard science professor. 